You're so wonderful, Jesus. You're all my heart has waited for. You're so wonderful, Jesus. I only want to ago <clears throat> I mentioned something that happened out in Seattle last Sunday night <clears throat> and that was this that a lady came up to me and she was complimenting me on my book glory she said you know she said so many times when I would pray she said in fact almost every time she would pray that as soon as she would start praying she would be carried away in the spirit but she thought she should be praying, and so she brought herself back down 
from that place that she was carried away to and thought, now I've got to pray. i got to pray. And she began to pray and pray the prayer list and pray the needs and pray. And then as soon as she'd start to pray again, she'd be carried away in the spirit. This was a struggle that she was having. And she said that when she read my book, that it freed her because she realized that being carried away in the spirit was the one of the highest forms of prayer. Amen. Now, the reason I comment on it, one of the brothers came to me after the service last night, and he said, Sister Ruth, I've got a problem. I want to ask you about it. He said, when I start to worship, and I'm really trying to worship the Lord, I begin to see things in vision and I see situations and needs in the church in vision. And he said, I keep rebuking the devil <clears throat> and telling the devil, I want to I wanna worship the Lord. And he said, these things that I'm seeing in vision before me when I'm trying to worship, I keep resisting. I said, brother, what are you seeing? He says, well, the Lord is showing me this particular situation and that. Uh, maybe I see a person uh, uh, with a, a, a distorted mouth that needs uh, the Lord to work in their mouth. Uh, maybe I see, but he says, I see situations in the church. I said, well, that's what coming to the throne is all about, is that we can be effective for God. Amen. Hallelujah, we worship until the glory comes so that the glory can bring forth revelation. And that revelation is not to distract you. It means that God trusts you enough that you can pray for the needs in the church, in the congregation. It's not to go home and tell about it. This brother has this problem and that one is the other. He said, well, some of the things I was seeing were shocking to me well you have to pray amen that the Lord gives you the ability to see and not be overwhelmed amen hallelujah that you can still bless and have the same respect for the individual amen knowing it's just like with the parent you see the weaknesses of the children and yet that love is still just as all encompassing hallelujah hallelujah I, I, i'm saying that because i told him i said don't resist that <laughs> that's what we're praying to come into amen that whatever way god wants to bring forth revelation and i've said re revelation begins with himself but he will cause it to come back down to the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. And later he might cause you to see uh, the nations of the world. But there's nothing more in the earth than the congregations uh, that we're working amongst. Amen. And living amongst. Uh, and God wants to cause those uh, to be developed. Uh, I say that to help you. Because so many times God is leading us on and we are resisting the very thing that the Holy Spirit is doing. I remember when we began to first sing a new song in Jerusalem, we had different visitors from different parts of the world. And <clears throat> I remember one night we shared with some folks from South Africa what the Lord was saying to us and how we were not praying in the old way as we had, but that rather our prayer meetings were full of the new song in which God brought a release of faith. And with that release of faith came a confidence that God was answering prayer. Hallelujah. One of the sisters said, oh, thank God you told us that. She said, I had been going to intercessory prayer groups uh, in South Africa, but she said it got to the place I couldn't go anymore. She said, I knew I wasn't backslidden, but my friends thought uh, because I wasn't coming to the intercessory prayer group uh, that I must be backslidden. 
But she said, I realize now God was leading me on. Amen. When God leads you on, then you can't go back to the former. Amen. Hallelujah. You may sit in the group and, and agree with them, but you can't go back and do the former because God has led you into a higher way. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't sit around as adults and say, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. But there was a time in our life it was the most vital thing. Amen. Hallelujah. It was the most important thing in our lives. But it's not today and we'd be looking silly if we sat saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Amen. God leads us on. And it doesn't mean that other ways are not valid. Let others do them until they come into a higher way in God. And don't be critical in your spirit. Now, if you leave and are critical, then you're wrong. Amen. But if you find that God's led you on... Hallelujah. And you want to sit down and be in a situation with the, uh, uh, where you're tasting of the marriage supper of the Lamb to come, then do that. Amen. Hallelujah. We can, we can uh, reach all in continually into the new that God's promising us. I'm reading this morning from Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Hallelujah. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth hallelujah and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power 
and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four be said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah I, all night long last night i could still hear the phrase of that song we sang in the service lamb upon the throne hallelujah i'm so glad that we have a lamb that is seated upon the throne. Hallelujah. Remember uh, as John looks to see that there is no one in heaven nor in earth uh, uh, that is worthy to open the seals. He hears the proclamation. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, uh, is here. He's worthy uh, to open the book. But when he looks, he doesn't see the lion. Amen. We're not going to see the lion throughout eternity. I don't know why it is, but we all tend to like the lion more than we do the lamb. There is something about human nature, and we have just witnessed power taken to the most negative extent a man a man feeling that he was the lion of babylon taken to this evil intent we know that the lord's power is not evil it is holy in all its ways hallelujah it is glorious but somehow we tend to want to identify more with the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I like the symbolism. It's the symbol of the city of Jerusalem. And I have a little pen that the mayor gave me. And anybody that has one of those pens, we know that they've only received it as a special gift from the mayor of Jerusalem. It's the lion, the symbol of the city. We like that lion. Amen. But the one that we are going to see throughout eternity is going to be the Lamb. Hallelujah. Forever and ever we're going to sing. Hallelujah. That he is worthy to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory and blessing. We wouldn't have a problem with the lion receiving all of those things. I mean, a lion deserves it. Of course, a lion deserves glory and honor and riches and blessing. But a little helpless lamb that has to keep its mouth closed and can't even open its mouth when it's led to the slaughter. You mean we're going to give glory and honor and riches and blessing to the Lamb? Oh, yes, we are. Hallelujah. Living in Jerusalem, we have a, we have a flock of lambs and sheep that come right to our... our uh, the adjoining property to the field next door to our house. When the shepherd is very bold, he tries to get in the lower, uh, lower paddock of our house into that garden area. But you know, lambs, they, they eat up all the grass and everything there. And so we manage to keep him with his sheep and goats in the next adjoining property. But every day we hear a certain bell sound. 
And people say, oh, is that the good humor ice cream truck coming by? Uh, I said, no, that's the shepherd bringing by his sheep to graze. I'm always blessed riding through the countryside. Oftentimes, if you're going speedily, you have to slow down the car because a flock of sheep are crossing. Hallelujah, the motorway. There's nothing there but seemingly a meekness, a meekness. We once had a sheep that we tried to raise. We called him, and we raised him a little while as a pet in Jerusalem until he... Uh, before somebody could pick up the hundred dollar bill they had dropped he had chewed half of it up and so we quickly got rid of Motek Motek means sweetie he wasn't quite so sweet after he ate half of the hundred dollar bill hallelujah well we have lived very closely with sheep and as the scripture says, there was no beauty that we should desire him. That was as the lamb that was slain. Amen. The lamb that was slain. This is not a whole lamb that we're giving honor to. Amen. This is a slain lamb. A lamb that was slain from the very foundation of the world but the Lord is going to have a song the anthem of heaven hallelujah is going to be to the slain lamb they sang the song the living creatures sang the four and twenty elders sang ten thousand times ten thousand angels they sang hallelujah hallelujah you praise the Lord they sang concerning the lamb upon the throne I want to say this that if we are going to rule we're going to have to get the nature of the lamb amen not many amens can I try it again <laughs> If we are going to rule, we're not going to rule as the lion. We're going to rule as the lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. And God wants to work the lamb nature into our spirit. And I can say, as Paul said, not that we've attained but we know which direction to press. Amen. Hallelujah. If you know the direction that God wants to move concerning the next revival in every area that you know that that's going to be part of it and to be a significant aspect of it, if at least you head in that direction. You might have a few stops and starts along the way and you may not have come up to it in perfection. For instance, I know that the next revival is going to be a revival of lots of singing in the spirit. From the moment that I knew it, I made up my mind every day I was going to sing in the spirit. Now I haven't. I haven't once sung in the spirit as beautifully as mother has all these years. I think if I were to say the finest thing she does that blesses me, and she does many wonderful things, and that's when she sings in the spirit. She touches a realm of the glory of God that showers over my soul and stays with me. And I have carried it to the nations of the world. Some of you, the things that I appreciate is that touch of eternity that comes as you sing in the spirit. But even if you don't do it well, 
Hallelujah. I made up my mind when God showed me it was going to be part of the revival uh, that I was going to sing every day in the spirit. Uh, and sometimes I have a voice and my, sometimes I don't, but I sing anyway. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and sometimes you just automatically come into that glory sound. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, you can tell you're still trying to get there, uh, but do it anyway. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the thing with it is this, is that you look in the direction that God has revealed to you that the revival is going to be and you move in that direction. Amen. Even, you know, we're all waiting for these things to come upon us full bloom. There are few that are so blessed, but very few. Amen. Amen. Very few, usually the pastors, uh, have to suffer through the nursery, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, uh, adolescence, all of, the, all of the traumas of his congregation uh, as they're getting there. But thank God one day uh, they arrive with a diploma in singing in the spirit uh, and prophesying unto the Lord uh, and healing the sick uh, and relationships with people uh, and all of the other diplomas hallelujah but in the meantime we don't give up amen hallelujah we don't wait for people to come full bloom into those things that God has and let's not expect it of ourselves but be conscious of this that every week you're improving. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm doing a little bit better than I used to do. Amen. I'm blessing a few more people than I used to. Oh, hallelujah. The song of the Lord is blessing me more than it used to. Why? Because what are we going to offer him when we're before the throne? We're not going to prophesy prophecy that will be done away with. Amen. We prophesy until he that is perfect is come. We are not going to prophesy round about the throne, nor either are we going to heal the sick nor preach, but we are going to sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to sing throughout eternity. We're going to praise and worship and adore, oh hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful that the Lord has made it simple enough that we can all participate, hallelujah, wherever we are, that we can be cultivating and letting the Holy Spirit develop those talents that we're going to use round about the throne, singing and worshiping and adoring, hallelujah, and loving the Lamb. Now for us to have an appreciation of the Lamb, we need to let the Lord work it into our spirit. We have just observed the Lord's Supper together. And when we remember his death on the cross, how grateful we are for the sacrifice that our sins were forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to celebrate that great deliverance throughout all eternity. But I want to say this. The lamb upon the throne is more than our salvation. Amen. It's his very nature as a lamb that he wants to come into our very being. Hallelujah. Pentecost for years has had a little, not proper Pentecost. I have to be careful when mother's present because she only knows the real kind of Pentecost. But the modern variety has had a hard edge that is not of God. And even today, some of the teachings concerning the prophetic ministry that are going across America is not the New Testament aspect of the prophetic anointing. They are reaching back for the fire and brimstone of the Old Testament. 
But the greatest and finest example that we have of the prophet is Jesus himself hallelujah hallelujah who when he saw the woman who had committed adultery says neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more hallelujah hallelujah throughout his ministry he's the one that taught us if we were to ask to go a mile to go two miles amen if our brother had asked for forget if our brother had offended us not just to be willing to forgive one time but 70 times seven a day oh my hallelujah the nature of Jesus uh, working more and more in us will bring the glory we've been working on mother mother's manuscript brother McDougall and I the last few days we spent all afternoon yesterday and the day before working on it well one of the statements comes to me right now that she made she said when you love your enemies the glory automatically comes amen amen that's the lamb nature that's the lamb nature we've all had moments of Sort of the high moments in Zion is what they call it. <laughs> the high moments in Zion when we have had the ability to do that. Uh, hallelujah. But the Lord wants to work it more and more uh, into our spirit. Uh, I think probably one of the hardest parts uh, of the Lamb is when he was reviled. Uh, Revile not again. Amen. Oh, he led as a lamb to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth. Oh, but unto the lamb. It's to the lamb who sits on the throne that is given glory and honor and power and riches and wisdom and strength and blessing oh takabashi hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord that revelation of the Lamb of God God wants to put it in our spirit and release a song of the Lord that we'll be able to join in. Hallelujah. We'll join in with the redeemed of all ages and sing a new song. It hasn't been sung yet. There's a brand new one we're going to sing just in, in front of the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get right in front of the throne and together we're all going to sing the song unto the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 The Lamb upon the throne God wants to give us more and more authority in his kingdom amen hallelujah and that authority rests upon those who more and more become like unto him as the lamb amen hallelujah hallelujah say well if I become a lamb they'll walk all over me well the servant is not greater than his Lord. Amen. Amen. Not many amens either. <laughs> the servant can be as his Lord, but not greater. Hallelujah. And I, uh, one thing is this. In the midst of revival, there's great blessing, but there's also, uh, there's also the stirring up of things against the anointing and the spirit of God hallelujah and we're going to have to these ladies in uh, in Seattle some friends of mine that formerly I first knew them through the aglow head of one of the uh, the whole Seattle area for aglow and now is retired from that and <clears throat> She is lining up a group of, has organized a group of people called Servants Incorporated. Now, that's a very dangerous name. 
don't name yourself something <laughs> if you don't want to fulfill the role. And uh, a group of about 18 ladies recently formed the nucleus for a big convention that Brother Paul Crawford had in Seattle about two weeks ago with Brother Paul Kane and Mike Bickle and, and uh, Fran Japan and several others. And it was their job to do all of the work in connection with the conference. They were to they they did the the secretarial and they did the registration and anything that needed to be done. And one lady said, "I didn't know I had so much anger in me." She said, "We dealt with the public." She said, "But after several times of exploding, she said I began to learn how to keep my mouth closed." Now, it was an eye-opener for her because suddenly, I mean, she's one of the most spiritual people in Seattle. But suddenly, in the midst of revival with all the little, you know, the little things that come along, the, the questions, the needs, the problems, the situations, right when they want to be a blessing, they're feeling this desire to answer. <laughs> Let as a lamb, open not his mouth. Oh, hallelujah. I understand those folks just did that meeting up in, in, uh, in Washington area. I'm sure they could tell us a few stories too. Hallelujah. Why? Because with revival, there come added responsibilities. And with those responsibilities, if we're not careful, we're going to be the lion roaring. But it's not going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's going to be just the roaring lion when the Lord wants us to be the lamb. Hallelujah. Sitting in authority and power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The lamb with crowns upon his head. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord wants to crown us with glory and honor as well. And it will come as we allow the Spirit of God to work this into our nature. Hallelujah. And we're going to join together and we're going to sing the song. Hallelujah. Of the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Lamb upon the throne. John looked and he saw the Lamb standing upon the Mount Zion, uh, ruling and reigning. Who's going to rule uh, on the Mount Zion? The Lamb, not the Lion. Uh, amen. The Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When John sees uh, and says, uh, uh, Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. He prevailed as the Lion. Uh, but we shall see him throughout eternity as the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And our Heavenly Father, I just believe thee that thou shalt work into our spirit those things, Lord, that thou dost desire. Lord, it's not that we have attained but we see the direction. We've looked upon thee and seen thee in all of thy beauty. And we want to be like unto thee. And we pray, Lord, that thou shalt work within us. Take the nature of man away from us more and more. And let us be yielded to the Holy Spirit. And have the nature and the likeness of Jesus coming forth in our lives. Oh, Risi Amaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Papa Rishi, I just pray where you are. Hallelujah. Either say amen or oh me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Papa Rishi, let's just pray in the spirit a moment. Lamb upon the throne. Hallelujah. 
Hatarabo ribiande Esti alamando Rishia Maya I corribianda Rishia Lamaya Hallelujah We want to be like you O Lord Ati alamando ribiasha Take the sharp edges away Hallelujah Remove the sharp edges I pray And give us a meekness A mildness Hallelujah Work that likeness into our spirit O Rishia Maya Hallelujah, hallelujah. Could we just gather around the front for a moment? Let's do that song we did last night. Uh, what key were we doing it in? All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can come I said, how's the person doing? The wife said he didn't realize that there were certain things in him. He says he's gotten angry at the people he's dealt with on several occasions and has been shocked by it. Well, when you fast, some of these things begin to be revealed. Amen. Our sister Nancy in Jerusalem <clears throat> before she came to be with us, worked for a lady in, in the city helping her <clears throat> and found the woman to be very difficult, <clears throat> very demanding. And I had forgotten this. In the second morning of the war, I discovered that this lady had been all alone the night before in the bombing in Tel Aviv with nobody to help her put on her gas mask. She's partially invalidic and I invited her up to Jerusalem now here Nancy at that time was about the 18th day of her fast you know oftentimes God gives you a chance to do it all over again 
and from 18 days to 40 while she was fasting. Every time the siren rang, she had to go and help pick her up, bring her in, set her down, help her in the midst of the, of the troubles. But she was an overcomer. Amen. An overcomer. You understand what I'm saying? God gives us repeat opportunities. Hallelujah. To be the overcomer. It's the lamb that's the overcomer, not the lion. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the lamb is the overcomer. Oh, hallelujah. He is seated there. I want us to worship him again and let God work something into your spirit. Hallelujah. Oh.